name's Tomoyo Kawano. I am a board certified dance movement therapist. Right now I'm a graduate student as well in expressive therapies. So um, I have a master's in somatic counseling psychology and dance movement therapy. But um, it's for so it's for people who have um, clinical experience in the field and want to I was working at um, several hospitals in Denver and New York um, on inpatient psych and also physical rehab. A pioneer called Marion Chase. Um, she developed several techniques and one of them is called um, kinesthetic empathy. And um, that's basically mirroring what the other person is doing. So reflecting back what they're doing in their movement and also like affectively and kind of joining in their world, so to speak. So normalizing whatever they're doing, like because people can have like little quirks in the way they, you know, talk or express or, or even thought wise. And she would just like do it with them instead of like, you know, making it weird or yeah, stuff like that. So I think I've learned um, that like anything can be normal. <laughs> Um, and it's really about the relationship and how you kind of, what you do with it. So anything can also be used to kind of, um, you know, um, create relationships also. I've worked with all sorts. I've worked with preschool children to, you know, adults, teenagers, adults. Um, I, my main experience is with um, adults, like acute psychiatric adult patients. I think a lot of people uh, who seek out dance movement therapy are kind of inclined towards something body oriented that they maybe have a sense that that could be useful or helpful for them. Um, in the environment I was working in, it was just, you know, considered some uh, alternative form of therapy that people can get um, because, you know, it was institution hospitals and um, nonprofits, they were already kind of um, set up for people to just have access to like dance therapy or like art therapy or other kind of therapies. And I think there is definitely um, the way the body is perceived is different in different cultures. And um, I often in the hospital setting, um, men were very adver averse to kind of doing therapy because it was for girls or, you know, in the thought dancing only happened if you were drunk at a bar. There's a very strong cultural uh, bias, I guess, towards, you know, dance is something that women do or children do, or, you know, it's not really helpful or useful in any way. Um, but I think it's, it's a way to um, kind of get rid of the filters because you can't really fake it. You know, like what, what you do with your body is just kind of there and unless you're like really trained in, in acting or something maybe, um, people usually just don't really pay attention to how their body is. And um, yeah, so, um, but I do also notice that like in Japan, um, if part of what, what dance therapy is here is um, it's like an improvisational, relational creation of something that people can do together and in Japan, there's an attitude that um, the therapist has to be like the teacher. So improvisation is, is a little bit difficult. Um, so that, that would just kind of dictate how it plays out, I guess. The talking is used. Um, sometimes I just reflect back what a patient might be doing, a client might be doing. So they have a sense of what they're doing and, you know, because sometimes people just do things and they don't know what they're doing, but if you just say, oh, you know, their affect or, you know, their expression or, uh, you know, how they appear to others like this or me, you know, just um, using that verbal kind of prompting, I guess, or reflection.